Islam has a different approach, and their approach is cult-like. Okay. Mm, yes, yes. Um, there is, I didn't, I wasn't planning on getting into the Stadius, but I'm going to waste time today. Hopefully it's not wasting. <laughs> um, so, um, there's a, there's an acronym. Uh, I think I learned this, uh, from Mike Winger and he was talking about more like seventh, seventh day Adventists and other weird cult things. But he was talking about, there's an acronym for, for what, how most cults function. And uh, he used the acronym BAIT, right? Because in order for you to, like, get into a cult, right, the, the whoever gets you into it, you know, who's already in there, they kind of bait you, right? It's like they, they throw you a line, and then, like, as soon as you're on the hook, then they just reel you in. And once you're reeled in, right, once you've taken the bait, it's it, it becomes a brainwashing process, and it's very, very difficult, very, very difficult to escape that brainwashing right so how is how is islam a cult when you use the acronym bait now it's spelled spelled different sorry guys it's b e i t bait is how we pronounce it because they're baiting you uh but the first the b stands for behaviors and one of the best ways to brainwash people and you can and this is also the best way to teach one of the best ways to teach people right is repetition behaviors over and over and over again say the same thing do the same thing have the same ritualistic um body movements speech patterns all of those types of things right what that's doing and we understand through neuroplasticity now what that's doing is that's creating um neuron connections within the brain so that it's always going to function that way or it's a very easy path for it to function that way and once that's established it's very difficult to get someone off of that right so repetitive behaviors are one of the key signs of um uh cults okay mm -hmm. now thaddeus remind me i'm sure i'm mistaken because uh, is 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 do, does islam have just like over and over again repetitive things that they have to do yeah i mean there's a couple but the, the obvious one here is going to be five daily prayers that are uh, right. essentially identical right five daily prayers uh you wake up satan's in your nose uh you step into the the restroom with the correct foot i mean it's down you wipe uh, an odd number of times with a smooth stone um it, it, i've not dug totally deep into this just because i have just general knowledge of it um <laughs> It's, it's very cult-like behavior, right? Like you have to dress a certain way. You have to behave a certain way. Um, it's just ritual after ritual, repetitive, 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 right? Now, yeah, yeah. very, very ritualistic for sure. You know, there's a, a, a proper way to get dressed. There's a yep. proper way to go to the bathroom, as mm -hmm. you pointed out. And right. there's a proper way to, to pray there's a you know you have to be in the right posture at the mm -hmm. exact right time of day mm -hmm. and, and if you're doing it at some other time uh you know god might not hear you he has to <laughs> well <laughs> you laugh but <laughs> i mean a muslim might not say it that way but he supposedly descends and comes closer so he can hear better right. at that particular time of day uh, <laughs> i'm not making that up i know that, you're that's not in it's, so funny. it's funny because it's true that is, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> Allah descends to the lowest heaven at the last third of the night over the flat earth so that he can hear the prayers of the unbelievers. Because if Allah thought the earth was a sphere, he would have to do the math and realize that it is perpetually the last third of the night somewhere on earth, just like it's five o'clock somewhere. So. Oh, it looks like Swati has joined us. He, he's letting us know that Islam is a complete code of life. Thank you for making our point for us. <laughs> We're talking about how Islam controls every aspect of your life like a cult. And then mm -hmm. you come in here and the first thing you post, probably he, having not actually heard anything we he said, is it. Islam is a complete code of life. It is. Absolutely right. It's repetitive. It's, it's, it's a brainwashing technique. Uh, the second acronym is E which stands for emotional control, right? This one's pretty simple, right? So you must follow the rituals. And the reason why you must follow the rituals is because hellfire awaits you, uh, beheading awaits you if you apostatize, beating awaits you if you do the, this wrong thing, that wrong thing, the other wrong thing. You'll be ostracized uh, from your community if you don't follow these particular rules. 
Uh, you're scared half to death of hellfire. You're scared to death that the Satan's going to urinate in your ears or that he's going to hang out in your nose or that if you don't say Bishmala before you consummate uh, with your with your mate, that somehow one of the shaitans, and this is true, thing will uh, become uh, w- interlocked with your your the husband's thing and then the baby born will be half jinn, half human. Um, which, by the way, Muhammad's father probably didn't say Bismillah before. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want you guys to do too much of the math there, right? But the point being is you can control people, right? We're, we're, we're pretty simple creatures. We seek pleasure and we uh, avoid pain. Pretty simple. Pursue pleasure, avoid pain. Um, and so, you know, they go, oh, all that stuff you want to do here on Earth, you can't do that now or, you know, but there's loopholes to this, of course, there are loopholes. Um, but once you get once you get to heaven, right, if you do everything that we say in this cult mindset, if you do everything we say, then all of the things that you've been denying yourself, all the sinful pleasures that you want to have here on Earth that you're forbidden to do, guess where you can do them? <laughs> Right before the presence of God, of course, like the greatest that you can sin in front of God all day long in heaven. It don't bother him none. You know, like it, it, it's insane, but it's emotional, right? Oh, I want to do these things. I'm, I'm pursuing that pleasure and I don't want to have these things. So that's another way to control people through behaviors and through emotional engagement. Did you want to say anything about Thaddeus? Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned social ostracization because I think that this is if there if there's one hallmark of a cult, I think that's it. Yeah. That, uh, if if once you've joined, if you try to leave, mm-hmm. uh, the best thing that can happen to you is that you'll lose all of your friends and all of your family. That's right. the best thing that can happen to you when right. you, once you've joined a cult. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and and some people would rather just die than to lose their entire family. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, so it's yeah, it's it's a big deal. We're we're designed to be in relationships with others. We're designed to live in a community. Um, so the social ostracization is a big deal. I in bait is information control. Okay. Have you ever heard this before Thaddeus? Have I ever told you this? No. Okay. So infra- information control before I launch into it, uh, what, what do you think that means? Uh, making sure that you don't hear things that uh, go against you, mm-hmm. the worldview they're teaching you. Yep. So you, you create these communities, right? You're brainwashing people that if you don't do what we are informing you to do, you're going to go to hell. If you do what we are informing you to do, you're going to go to paradise. Um, And so this is all wrapped up into it. At the same time, right, you can say, well, you don't really, the information on the internet isn't true because you don't know Arabic, right? You don't speak Arabic. Well, it might not make sense in English or whatever language you speak, but it makes sense in uh in arabic in the original language um and so what ends up happening is is they kind of create this barrier of if it did not come from an islamic scholar if it did not come from a sahi hadith if it did not come from the quran and if it wasn't delivered to you in arabic and if you don't understand arabic then you just have to take the words of your leaders and their information uh at at whatever they tell you to do right so it's it's creating this barrier between uh, the outside information of the world and saying the only reliable information that there is is within our social circle. These, these are the only people you can trust, right? And this leads into the emotional fear and all this kinds of stuff, right? That's, that's why I truly believe a lot of Muslims are very conspiracy theory minded because their religion is it built into the religion is conspiracy theories, right? The the Jews are trying to do magic or whatever it is to you. People are trying to take you down. Allah says all these kinds of crazy, um, you know, fear based things. Other people are trying to harm you. Uh, even in Surah Nine, right? It's like, well, even if they make peace with you, they probably don't really want peace. So just kill them anyway. Um, it, it's a conspiracy theory mindset. Anything that's other is evil, and the only thing that you can trust beyond even your own intellect. And this is what, and this is what's really like. Once the person loses, and this is like a gaslighting situation. Once the person goes, well, it doesn't seem right that a six-year-old and a and a fifty-four-year-old would consummate a marriage. It doesn't seem right 
that someone would adopt someone and then abolish adoption and then cause the divorce of them and their wife and then marry that wife. That doesn't seem right, right? But it, if if you can convince that person that their own thoughts are wrong, right, and mm -hmm. you, they can't even trust themselves, then they have to trust the scholars. They have to trust the leaders. Um, so the information control. Uh, and all of these things lead to the final one. Sorry, this is like a way sidebar thing. No, oh, good. It's good. Been, it's good. I've been meaning to do a video on this for like over a year now. And uh, as you can tell, I'm totally on it. Um, T stands for thought control, right? All of those things, right, lead to to your your thoughts being controlled by the group leaders. You give up your own thoughts. You don't trust your own thoughts. The only thoughts that you can trust are Allah knows best. The scholars know best. Uh, Muhammad knows best i don't know anything if i want these pleasurable things and to avoid these painful things i just have to deny myself right and this is sort of biblical but deny myself and just listen to whatever the heck they say whereas in christianity jesus says ask hard questions right uh, I, I don't understand the trinity how can how can it seems contradictory that uh god can exist both finitely as a man and infinitely as god how does that make sense the christianity jesus says that we should ask those types of questions we should have no fear of asking those questions and in fact he promises us that if we do ask questions and seek and knock that he will open the door for us he will answer those questions for us and that's one of the things and that's the reason why my name is asked um is because the more i do this the more i'm blown away at how Christ reveals his truth, his nature to, to myself. Absolutely. You know, truth is not afraid of questions because right. if something's true, the more you look into it, the more evidence you have, as long right. as you're approaching it with an open mind, you should get there. So exactly. any system that tells you, you shouldn't ask questions. And I have heard this from probably every single ex-Muslim. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons they started to question in Islam is because as a child, they were told, do not ask questions. We don't ask right. those kind of questions. Right. Uh, right. Just listen to what your mom says. Just obey your parents and you're good. Don't worry about these things. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Uh, and, and I mean, a lot of people, of course, will just fall into the line and, and they'll just follow that. But what does that say if, if they're afraid of truth? You know, they're oh, afraid does. of questions. Right, exactly. So um, people want to be, if, if I hold the truth, I want to be examined. That's pretty, pretty simple, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward types of stuff. Um, oh, and I, I don't, I don't want to give a spoiler here Thaddeus to to the whole ask seek knock thing uh but the second part of my name is truth because when you ask seek and knock you'll find out that Jesus is the way the truth and the life 